Furthermore, development of coal power projects has been a topic of hot debate in the country. Although electricity generation through local coal is being encouraged, whereas the plants based on imported fuels have seen criticism on the pretext that these plants increase the import bill and reduce foreign exchange reserves. Moreover, environmentalists have also raised concerns about the potential hazards associated with the coal fight generation. Also, there is a long debate on hydro versus thermal generation. To discuss these issues in detail, we have invited industry experts from the sectors and have planned a panel discussion on the issues. And with these words, my introduction to today's generation session comes to an end. Thank you very much. Let's move on to our first presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, to make most of this generation segment and to incorporate global practices in our power sector. Our next presentation relates to a brief overview of global energy outlook. And for this, we have two presenters who will give presentations on the topic according to their specific area of expertise. So, firstly, I would like to call Mr. Ali Yasir. Mr. Yasser has over 15 years of experience in the energy and environment sector. He is presently working at the International Renewable Energy Agency as a program officer with a focus on energy access and off-grid renewable energy. So please welcome Mr. Ali Yasser. and the direction that you know such sessions here can take can really uh, greatly benefit the energy sector of Pakistan. So I'll uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, basically, uh, and thank you very much, Mr. Kawar, for the introduction and uh, coming to the presentation. Um, IRENA has uh, the International Renewable Energy Agency. It carries out a uh, detailed macroeconomic analysis uh, called uh, basically uh, Renewable Energy Roadmaps, shortened to REMAP. So a REMAP analysis was carried out by IRENA uh, to look into how the energy sector, uh, how the global energy transformation has uh, would look like uh, in the year 2050 if the Paris Agreement commitments are to be met. Uh, so that's what the focus will, of this presentation will be on how you know the different end uses and the total energy, final energy consumption, power generation, all of that needs to transform if we are to preserve the, uh, if we are to meet the requirements of the Paris Declaration and keep the climate change uh, under two degrees. So, uh, so firstly, uh, just to uh, tell you all a little bit about IRENA, it's uh, an intergovernmental body uh, with the mandate to promote renewable energy uh, globally and the scope covers all renewable energy technologies. Um, we have presently 161 full members and 23 more country member countries that are in accession, so we have nearly global membership. And uh, IRENA functions as a center of excellence for knowledge and innovation. So we have several knowledge products, publications in the renewable energy sector. Uh, IRENA represents the renewable energy sector at you know a lot of the internal, the uh, major fora, including G7, G20, and, and all these places. And uh, it's a hub for networking, you know, creating south, south, north, south, and triangular cooperation. And it's a source of advice and support where IRENA provides technical assistance to its members through uh, regional and country programs 
I myself am from the division called Country uh, Engagement and Partnerships, where we uh, provide, we work with uh, our member state governments either through regional programs or through direct country interventions. Yes, so uh, just to explain this analysis that was done by Irina, uh, we have a reference case which is all the commitments, all the, uh, you can say, the long-term plans, all the uh, targets that are set currently at, uh, you know, at, at present day, that is the reference case for the remap analysis. And then uh, we have, sorry, that is the reference case and then for the analysis we have taken what would be required beyond what is committed today in order to meet the Paris Agreement and ensure that climate change is uh, kept uh, at manageable, um, you can say, uh, rate, uh, at a manageable uh, rate. And uh, just to uh, explain, uh, you can say that, uh, you know, the, the scenario includes deployment of several low carbon technologies and a lot of that is renewable energy and energy efficiency, as Mr. Vice Chair also mentioned in his uh, opening remarks. And uh, you can say that about 90% of the emission reduction that is needed in the energy sector comes from renewables and energy efficiency in the uh, analysis. Then, uh, just having a look at how the prices, the costs of renewable energy have come down, um, unfortunately, I, I'm not sure how clear it is, but um, somehow uh, the... Uh, okay, well there is, uh, I don't know if you can see, uh, because there's a color that somehow is missing in the graphic which shows the fossil fuel range. So, uh, if you can imagine, uh, you can say basically all the, uh, the prices of renewables globally, this is for projects that have been, been commissioned uh, at the moment. So the LCOE from renewable energy generation all lies within the fossil fuel range, global, if taking the global averages of all technologies except for concentrating solar power at the moment. And uh, you can say the bio, hydro, of course, and then also bioenergy, onshore wind, all fall at the lower end of the fossil fuel range. So they're all falling, and then the solar PV is also entering into the uh, lower range. And uh, offshore wind, uh, you can say offshore wind and CSP do not have as much deployment. Uh, they are the two relatively expensive ones at the moment. But uh, this is currently showing, uh, you can say, a global average of LCOE for uh, solar PV to be around 8.5 cents and for onshore wind to be around 5.6 cents. However, for upcoming projects that have been, you know, the results of latest auctions, they show that the upcoming projects uh, for solar and wind, the lowest, the record lowest, uh, you can say, costs that have been offered uh, under the various, uh, uh, you can say, auctions, have come down to around two cents per kilowatt hour. So solar has come down to around two cents for projects that will be deployed either towards the end of this year or for next year and wind has come down, has come down to about 2.1 cents. Of course, there are many other factors. We cannot simply say that if we were, we were to hold uh, an auction today in Pakistan, we would achieve the same uh, rates. But nonetheless, uh, this downward trend is expected to continue, and it's already uh, you know, fairly significant. Now, the progress so far on the transition, I mean, just to look at uh, clearly you can say uh, conceptualize the sorry uh, yes so if you look at you know over the key milestones over the last 20 years where we can say that the Kyoto Protocol in 1997 started this movement towards you know decarbonizing the energy sector um, and you know we've uh, you can say since then, some of the significant things include, like, you know, at, at different uh, time intervals, we've had, we achieved 50 gigawatts of uh, global wind energy in 2005, uh, 15 gigawatts of solar was achieved globally in 2017. Um, then moving forward, you know, if we go by, there, there, are, there are already, uh, you know, the movement, to, like in 2010, we had the first electric bus that was on the road. 
uh, auctions for solar PV started driving prices down around 2010-2011 as well. Uh, you know, uh, fuel blending in commercial flights began in 2011. And moving on, you know, before we had the Paris Agreement and the Sustainable Development Goals in 2015, uh, you know, we've, we've since then been achieving a lot of increase in electric vehicles. Uh, you know, and then as I mentioned in 2018, the auction price for wind came down to about $21 per megawatt hour, which is around 2.1 cents per kilowatt hour, and slightly lower for solar. This was achieved in 2018. Now, the, you can say the progress that progress has been made towards the energy transition, but acceleration is certainly needed. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, costs of renewables continue to decline, and solar and wind are leading the capacity invention. Um, you can say the, the economies are, you know, many economies, uh, more so in uh, Europe, are moving, you know, significantly towards renewables. Uh, you know, 33% of electricity generation in the UK, 40% in Germany and Spain were achieved through renewables in the year 2018. And uh, we have now, also at the end of 2018, uh, which is actually when this reference case was taken for the remap analysis, we had already surpassed 2 million electric vehicles uh, on the road. Uh, so, when we look at how the uh, progress is being made, um, so the various things that are uh, that are looked in the analysis include uh, the share. if we look at the top of that graph, the top left is the share of electricity in the final energy consumption. This is one where we are presently off track. In 2010, from 2010 to 2018, uh, we had an increase in renewables in the final energy consumption by from 18% to 20%. And then when we look at the scenarios needed, by 2050, this has to increase to about 49%. So all energy consumed, uh, you know, not just power, you know, beyond power as well, in the end use sectors and buildings, 49% of all energy, uh, that is, the all final energy consumption has to be, you know, renewable energy raised in order for us to uh, you know, achieve the climate targets, and over here we are certainly off track. Uh, we are on track in terms of renewable energy capacity generation that is growing. Um, it grew from 20% to 25% between 2010 and 2018, and uh, by 2030 we are looking at projections that it would be up to 57%, and we would require at 2050 around 86% of uh, total generation capacity to be renewable driven, and over there, progress is being made. Um, similarly, you can say on solar, the uh, PV, the, the solar photovoltaic is growing at a scale that is uh, on track. The wind additions are perhaps coming down slightly. Uh, well, or let's say they're not coming down, but they're not uh, being deployed at the same rate as, as that is needed. And uh, another area where we are on track is uh, the electric vehicles and the uh, general electric mobility. That is one place where uh, we, we are again on track. <coughs> However, district heating, use of uh, renewables or clean energy in for you know heating, uh, you know that that area is uh, uh, where we are. Still, we still have a lot to do. And another emerging area where which is showing an upward trend is hydrogen production with renewable energy. So this is called green hydrogen, which is basically starting in uh, more, more so towards uh, in countries such as Germany, Denmark, where they tend to have surplus at certain times of the year from renewables where they have high wind and solar production. So that, uh, that uh, you can say, surplus is used to generate hydrogen and it's producing clean hydrogen uh, that can be used as a, as a fuel. So this is another emerging sector that's coming up. Um, in the end use sector, again, as I mentioned, this is where more progress needs to be made. Um, you know, the, 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 there are, I mean, besides electrification, a strong focus has to be on 
things like solar thermal heating or or you know using district heating in, in or, or cooling technologies and liquid biofuels in the transport sector so these are two areas so you know there is uh, a strong push in the electrification part with renewables but the biofuels uh, sector and the you can say thermal sector is where we are lacking 